Hey everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to Walk About Europe, the Football Manager 21 Journeyman Save where we can only move between football clubs in the game when we've walked or exercised that equivalent distance in real life. Speaking of which, we'll check the walkabout circle in this episode, but in this year season wrap episode with our first and perhaps only season with St. Etienne, we will take a look most importantly to see if we still have a job. The takeover has concluded. Did the group that promised to sack me if they got in control get in control and sack me? Or did another more did a friendlier group get control and we still have a job? That's question number one. The other question is, are we going to have to impose some dire consequence on our team because we didn't make our week two weight? I had to drop two pounds and get down to 211.4 pounds. And as of three days ago, we were 214.4 or something like that. We were way over. A lot of work to have been done. We'll check both of these things and more after the intro. Here we are. You might be able to see from behind me, there's a lot of green there. We didn't get fired. The takeover just got concluded a few days ago, maybe two, three days ago in game time. And the friendly group took over. They actually pumped some more money into the coffers and seemed to be pretty amenable to having me stay on as manager. Speaking of me as manager, we also had other good news. Yes, we look, if we look at our profile up here, our home, my profile, and my history overview. Nope, that's not it. Job history. How about milestones? Let's try that one. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? It's not there. Awards. Um... Yeah, there we are. St. Etienne, head coach of the season for League 1 in 25-26. Our third head coach of the year award. So go us. That was pretty cool. I didn't expect that with PSG winning the league. I figured they'd get the, the head coach of the season award. So yeah, we got one, two, three of them now. So we're kind of three out of six season piling them up a little bit there. I think there's an achievement for five. I wonder if we could get that before the end of this uh, walkabout Europe kind of uh, adventure we're on. But anyway, so year into the season, that's there. Now the next big question, we survived that and that's all good. Now the next thing we should talk about did we make our weight? We were way over as of three days ago, but that was an afternoon weight. And I'm always lighter in the morning because I generally lose about two pounds overnight, but still I was a little nervous. So we really watched our calories the last three days and exercised hard every day since that episode. Didn't, well, I did have the remainder of the chocolates, but there were only two left out of like 20. So that wasn't really too much of a problem. And here's our weight. Yeah. I was pretty stoked. 209.6. Now, I won't be able to play much. I mentioned that there's going to be a break week coming up. And so coming up in the save, I'm not going to be able to play at all for about a week. And so the next episode won't be until after the 10th of July. So the what we're doing now is I get a week break. We have two weeks to drop one pound. So I have to be 210.4 in two weeks time from this way. in. so that should be an interesting challenge because 4th of July here, we're going to eat a lot of food. And we're going to be traveling a little bit, so restaurant food. Generally, I put on about two pounds when this trip comes around. So I'm going to try to... I don't want to starve myself because part of it is to have fun on this trip. But I'm hopeful that I can kind of contain the damage and still make the next weigh-in. But we'll find out. Speaking of weigh-ins, I was looking through everybody's ideas for ultimatums if we don't make one of the weigh-ins. And I've settled on seven for right now. And I want to add three more. And then we're going to spin the wheel if ever I don't make an ultimatum weight challenge. So here's what... What I've got so far. So ultimatum number one is we have to play our best goalkeeper. And these are a lot of these came from the ideas and the comments and things like that too. Best goalkeeper at striker for three matches. I think that was FM Greenos. FM Digi and a few other people suggested you have to play an odd formation. FM Digi suggested a 1-1-8. I'm not even can you even do that in the game? I mean how do you get eight people at striker, I'm not really sure. But by odd, what I think we do is we have to play an odd formation and then you can put in the comments what goofy odd formation we have to play and then we'll just have to play that for three matches. And here's one that I thought of myself. We can play no one older than 20 for three of the next five matches. <laughs> that should be kind of fun. We do, I'm still gonna do the sell most valuable player for one million pounds thing. That would be, if we hit that one, that's probably the worst one in here. You're actually a lot nicer than I thought you would be when I suggested, suggested like, suggest some detrimental things that could happen. I thought you might say, like, you know, like, get divorced or, like, 
you know, sell your car or something. But nobody said stuff like that. It was all kind of, I thought, milder than my sell my sell our best player for one million kind of thing. We have to play, I thought of this one too. This is kind of working off a theme that people said, but we can only play defensive for three straight matches. And how about this one? This was someone else's idea, was to play our best striker. We had best goalkeeper at striker. But then I thought, well, let's do the other way. One of them could be we have to play our best striker at keeper for three matches. And then I think, I forget it was Alan maybe that mentioned, can't play our highest goal scorer for 30 days. <laughs> Looking for three more ideas. If you've got three more ultimatum ideas, we'll consider those. But that's what I've got so far. So there we are with that. Now, this is a year-end season wrap episode. And so we kind of covered those things. We're going to take a look at the walking circle. But let's just kind of reflect on the year just a little bit. I've since lost the email that has the season wrap. But I'm not really all that big a fan of those anyway. They, they seem like they have kind of a few dead screens in there. And it's kind of slow, I think. So we're just going to do a brief wrap of where we are. We're going to take a look at what's happened since then because it's been about two, three weeks now. Couldn't really do anything with bringing transfers in because we we're under the transfer embargo that's just been lifted and I've got one offer out there. But so here we are. This is our season wrap. As we saw in the last time, we just barely qualified for Champions League. And I the goal is to make the group stage play for next year. But according to the league mm, rules, the third place team is in the group stage. So I think we already made it, which makes it seem like that's a pretty easy achievement. So that would be cool. We'd get that one. But anyway, we'll see how that all plays out. But that's there. The thing that that does make me realize is that we're going to need more depth on the team. Even though it's only like six matches in group play, you know, those six weeks with two matches a week, plus all the other ones where you have two matches a week can really add up on a team, especially if you get, you know, some couple games, you know, canceled and stuff like that. So I've kind of got a list of things that we need based on players what we've got. I've got, we need another goalkeeper. We need a right back. We need a left back or a center back. We need a defensive midfielder, a striker, a good striker, not just any striker. We've been getting a lot of any strikers, but we need a good striker, a right winger, and then a center midfielder. So that's our shopping list. It's one, two, three, four, five, eight players in the off season. I think if we could get eight playable players, then I think we're going to be ready for the next season and not get kind of hit by the lack of depth that we had this year. So there is that. And, and we should take a look at a couple of just kind of general things to point out in terms of our players and stuff like that. So by far, our favorite and best player and fan favorite, Superzilla, my brother, what a season he had. We bought him for 10 million. He's worth 25 million now. 25 year old. He played inverted winger on the right hand side for us. 35 appearances, 19 goals, 14 assists with a 7.38 rating. Third in league un for goals scored. He was lightning on the right. So what a what a great pickup and he worked out really really well. So I'm glad he's still signed until 2030, so probably as long as we we'll, we're here he should be should still be under our flock and then someone comes in and tries to buy him for a whole ton of money. Um, other kind of notable things if we sort by average rating, King Okoro the defense, the center back that we signed for, I think, $3 million, $4 million or something like that, had our second highest rating at 7.24 with five league un goals, only as an 18-year-old. Three-star current ability, potential ability is now still at least four, possibly five. All his numbers continue to go up. I mean, this could be a star in the making. I'm looking forward to him getting a full season under his belt. There, I probably just jinxed it, right? He's probably going to get hurt. Um, other players over seven. Lewis Gibson, we just didn't talk very much about him, but he was a left back and center back who just kind of filled in in both positions and did really, really well. So I think we have to play him a lot more next year. And then I'm not sure if there's anything else to mention in here. We had a few other players over seven that were pretty good. But the big story really, I think, is Superzilla and then King Okoro were the standouts for a team as stars. And both of them should be back next year. So I'm pretty excited about that, including me. We'll be back next year too. So that's pretty cool. Um, transfers. We've been busy. We couldn't buy anybody, but we could sell people. So we sold people just because it's fun to do stuff. We sold Petar Pusic, who we picked up, remember, from uh, St. Gallen. We brought him here to St. Antien, and he just wasn't quite getting the job done. So we sold him pretty much for what we picked him up as, and I thought that was a pretty good deal, considering he's starting to get a little bit old to it, 27 years. I mean, he wasn't going to get better, that's for sure. We sold Marco Verratti, who just great, gradually over the course of last season turned into a refrigerator. We only sold him for $1 million, but the team picked him up on a free transfer, so no big loss there. But Verratti, where did he go? He went to a team in, what is this, Qatar? 
Al Arabi Sports Club. So I think that's a, the sign of a career winding down. But yeah, acceleration six, pace six. It's pretty much a story of a refrigerator, a man who became a refrigerator over the course of one season. And we did sell Joseph Idu, a 30-year-old center back. He's pretty good. We sold. I think we got him for like we sold him for 12 million. I probably could have sold him for a little bit more, but he's 30. I got a sense that he's going to be on the tail end of the. You know, maybe we can get another half season out of him, but yeah. So other players I still want to sell in the kind of the purge everybody over 30 year old category. We want to sell Dennis Boang, and I think I should be able to get about 12, 13 million for him. He had a great season with 14 goals and 28 appearances, but most of them were from the penalty spot. I think he had probably seven or eight goals from the penalty spot. So take those out and it's not quite as hot as he seems. And 31 years old and his pace and stamina are starting to drop. So I think that's pretty much the end of Dennis Boanga. So we're going to move him on. Then a backup uh, outside back, Sergi, Sergi Palencia, who's uh, pretty good, but 30 years old. And I think, yeah, we want, we just, we're going to get rid of everything over 30 uh, for as a basic rule. So that's kind of where we're going. We haven't picked up any transfers, but I did have one player who might come in that I'm kind of curious what you think of because he's kind of expensive. We have an offer out him to, for $14 million for this Philip Ronigan Jurgensen. And looks like he's, our scouts think he's four stars with four to four and a half star potential ability. Love the numbers. A lot of numbers scattered all over here. But 14 million is kind of a lot for us. And, um, you know, we pay him, I think, about 50000 a week, which seems pretty high too. But he had a pretty good year with Torino last year playing, let's see, 38, uh, 20. Yeah, th- well, that's the whole team. We don't want that. I oh, don't want that. Let's get career stats here. Here we go. Yeah, 37 appearances, only three goals, but he's a central midfielder. I mean, really. 14 assists, player of the match, five with a 7.18 rating in Serie A for a team that finished, I want to say they finished 11th last year, so mid-table in Serie A. So let me know what you think about him. I kind of like some of his numbers here. I mean, he's got pretty good speed, decent speed and pace, lots of green, good passing, a lot of numbers in the right places. I could see him being kind of a stalwart in central midfield, pick up that spot for us. But he's kind of expensive, more than I want to pay for him. So there is our transfers in, our transfers out. We don't play a match today because we got to do the summer. It's going to take me a while after I get back, once I can start playing again. It's going to take me a little while to make it through this season. So it might be like the 13th. It might be about a two-week break before our next episode. So it might come right back into our next weigh-in because I have to play through the rest of June and July. And it's going to be a lot of transfers, and that takes time. So it might be a little while before our next episode. I'm sorry about the, the delay there. But let's take one last look here. Before we sign off, let's take a look at our circle because it's doing pretty good, I think on the whole. Alrighty, so here's our circle. I mean, we we did pretty well last week. Last week was about 39 miles. So, and I've been concentrating on the diet part of it too, on getting health and good nutrition and stuff like that. So we can see the previous week's circle in the middle. Um, We're kind of worked our way farther into Switzerland and we are now into Italy, almost to Turin. So we can start to imagine if we had to move at some point, we could probably start to imagine a Serie A team being possible. Yeah, by the time we get maybe halfway through the next season or so, I would think. Still got a ways to go before we get to the tip of Germany up here. So we got kind of a hike to get to that corner right where my hand is waving there. And still a ways to go before we get down into Spain here in the southern corner too. So uh, we've got to keep picking them up and putting them down. I'm hopeful that the next week with a lot of, with a little bit of travel, that there's going to be a lot of opportunities to walk and stuff like that too. And I think I will count those miles, uh, even though we're not necessarily playing the game because there's been some times where... Um, the opposite's been true. We haven't been able to walk, kind of, even though we were playing the game. So um, looking forward to that. Hope we have a bigger circle the next time we check in. And I think with that, we should probably, um, we can wrap up today. Kind of a shorter episode here, but we don't have a match. So um, I think unless there's something else that I'm forgetting, we talked about all the big things. So happy we survived the takeover and stuff like that. And if you've got any more ideas for ultimatums, let me know. I'm still looking for three more to put on the whole spinning wheel there. Hopefully we'll never need it. 
But um, yeah, I'm super happy about the wait. Happy to be here. Really excited about next season. Looking forward to the offseason to add some more players in. When we're back, we'll be back in July. Kind of a preseason outlook. And then uh, might even be time. Might even make it back for our first match of next season. So take care, everybody. Have a great holiday if you're celebrating the 4th of July. If you are not, we'll see you in, a, in about two weeks for our next episode. Um, and thanks again for tuning in. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. Take care, everybody. We'll see you shortly.